Today's youth need teachers, volunteers, and most of all, well, they need you. I'm Doug Edwards, and I'm going to be talking with real youth mentors and students to give you the knowledge you need to be the best youth worker possible. This is Youth Worker on Fire. This is Youth Worker on Fire, and my name is Doug Edwards, your host, and welcome again, youth workers. Today, we're going to look at real, what is real, and what is counterfeit. And I'm going to tell you a little bit about that. The scripture today that I was reading, a buddy by the name of uh, Tim sends it to me, and I have several Tims that send me scripture, but this guy just sends the raw scripture, no thoughts about it or anything, just straight up. And this is Proverbs 15, 28 through 31, New Living Testament. But I'm not going to read you every word. I'm going to read you only the things that God says about the godly and the good things there. And I'm going to tell you why in a minute. So here it goes. The heart of the godly thinks carefully before speaking. The Lord, he hears the prayers of the righteous. A cheerful look brings joy to the heart. Good news makes for good health. If you listen to constructive criticism, you will be at home among the wise. I left part of that verse out because it talks about the wicked and the other parts. And you can go back and you can read that. But here's why. Friend of mine, Jim Bozinski, and he is also on some of the earlier podcasts. And he has, still has some very interesting friends. And he invited a secret service guy. How cool is that? What some people don't realize is the secret service was originally created for the Treasury Department. Later, they added in protecting the presidency. But they brought him in, and he talked about the way they train to find counterfeits. And so what he did was he said, we spend most of our time looking at what is real and identifying all the nuances and all the special art. I mean, it is amazing. If you ever take a look at any kind of American currency, there are swirls and and marks and, and artwork that goes into those plates that prints that money. And he said, we spend most of our time looking at real currency. And we spend a little time looking at counterfeit currency. And it was so funny, some of the stuff they'd bring in that was counterfeit currency was so obvious, except when you're exchanging money. Sometimes it would have the face of the president that was on a $5 bill, but it had 20 at the top. They had counterfeited 20. And some of them were very, very bad. I mean, they were like taped on and pasted on or something like that. Some were very, very good that were counterfeit. But they taught them to look at what was real, the real currency, and to spend most of your time with that real currency. And that's what the where the scripture, that's why I wanted to read this part of the scripture to you, because God is looking at our real currency, who we are, and we need to look at him closely and spend time with him so that we can easily identify counterfeit that's coming at us, things that are not real, that are not good, because it says the heart of the godly thinks carefully before speaking. Well, how do they do that? Well, they're spending time with God. Under They understand what is the sense, and we say this in Christianity, it makes no sense to someone who's not a believer, and it's hardest to hear what is real and what is counterfeit, unless we're spending a lot of time reading God's Word and praying and hearing His Spirit and our spirit connecting and sensing the difference and knowing what is false and what is true. Make sure that you're looking at Scripture going, okay, Let's just pull out all the things that he says about godly people. How can I identify 
people that I need in my life. You know, we talked about that. If you listen to constructive criticism, you will be at home among the wise. So, a couple of things. One, that last part of the scripture, it's hardest to hear criticism from those who know us very well, our family, our spouses, if we're married, someone we've been dating for a long time, our brothers, our sisters, anyone, grandparents, parents, whoever's been around us a lot, because they see the good and the stupid things we do and habits we have. But if we could hear them without emotion and negative reaction, we would be wise. Once again, what does God say? What is real? And what is counterfeit? And one thing he says is real is criticism is not there to hurt us, even though some people may use it to try to hurt us. But if we can step back, I always talk about, uh, not always, a lot of times I talk about people who fight fair. I have one former student who is now running for Congress. He knew where he was going, wanting to go. And he had mentors in his life. I remember, and I interviewed one of his mentors, too, who was a former state senator for the state of Florida. He's a fair fighter. He doesn't mind a fight, and he can keep a smile on his face while people are chewing him out. And he can say things that are absolutely controversial and make people so mad but he watches their reactions and does not react to their reactions because. A fair fighter, a good fighter, whether it's boxing or whether it's verbal or whether it's emotional or whether it's a soldier in war, knows how to analyze the war and the battles around them without injecting their emotions into it. And the more time you spend with God, the more time you're able to see people for who they are, see realities for what they are and what they're not. So you're looking for the real, you're spending God, so uh, time with God, looking for what is real for the believer, for the saint, as God, as the scripture talks about or is written about, those who are close to God, you'll see that more. And so what I challenge you to do is start going through scripture, and every time that goes to the wicked, Go back to that later, but always read all the positive things about what God says about you, about how he sees you, because our perception of ourself comes from our perception of who God is and how we see him. We say in student ministries and dealing with students, the psychologists say this, and and different Christian authors have said this, that we see God the way we see our earthly father. Now, if you've been fatherless, you never had, you didn't never knew your father. You're going to see God a particular way. If your father was super nice to you and always encouraging and never disciplined you out of anger, you're going to see God that way as a very good, giving and caring God who wants the best for you. If you had a father that was very hurtful and negative, you're going to see God the same way. You're not sure when God's going to drop the hammer. You know, when it's going to, he's actually just going to turn on you and, and, and strike you down or something. You know, we feel that way because of our past experiences. That's why I want you to go through and look at all the good things he says. And after you've done that for, let's say, three weeks, not looking at the negative that he says about the wicked or those who are falling away or those who are not, but looking at what he particularly says about you so you can see yourself and see God in the reality of him as love, as he wants you to win, not lose. Beth Moore came out with a new book, and she talks about this generation and how they see things differently and cannot hear certain things that we used to say in ministry, even though they're biblically true, but these last few generations have started rejecting anything that feels negative, that feels opposite of what their political mind, and they don't call it political, they're not thinking that way, but we have all been influenced by our society one way or another. We're influenced by technology, the lack of or the plus of in our reality. 
There's certain things we used to say that we're going to have to learn to say a different way simply because they cannot, or you cannot, if you're listening to this near the last three generations, but you cannot hear. So I want you to go look at God and all the positive things he says, because there's so many negative things said about God and his cruelty when in reality, God is love. I love Ephesians 2.10. He has created, God has created in advance good works for you to do in Christ Jesus. Look at that. Start looking at verses like that. Memorize that verse. How real is that? That's not counterfeit. What has God designed for me to do today? One part of this verse reminds us to look at people with joy and a smile. Remember, laughter and smiles affects the brain and makes them 31% smarter. Now, I've told you that before. That's a statistic and a, a study that was out there, and they found that to be true. We can make people smarter or actually respond better in their day-to-day effort if we help them to smile or laugh or feel good about themselves. Good news matters. Remember, that was the last part of that verse that I read you about the good news and what it does to the heart. Vanessa Van Edwards, who I've talked about before, who is the body language expert, go see her on YouTube. She's got books, all kinds of good stuff, says when people say, how are you, give a very positive or funny response. Then ask them, how is your day going? Tell me something good about your day. When you say, tell me something good, it puts a whole nother twist. When we usually say, how is your day? People usually think of the negative first. But we're going to inject to them, interject into them, a thought of, well, wait a minute. Did something good happen today? And they're going to immediately go there, and it's going to make them think pleasant thoughts. You will get a totally different response with a positive action and verbiage. Remember, great speakers often start by making people laugh or feel good about themselves first. When that happens, people become smart. People become smart enough to listen. When they know you're on their side and you can make them smile or laugh, they're then interested in listening to what you have to say. And hopefully, You've been around God enough to see what's real and to have something positive to say. This is harder with family. It's harder. There's things I can say to other people and other crowds, people I work with on a daily basis, and they respond with laughter and with smiles and say positive things back. But my family, my wife, my children, I have to keep working on it and keep working on it and have to be willing to listen. And I don't do a good job a lot of times. I react. I'm not a fair fighter. And I'm trying to be a fair fighter, someone who hears more of the way God sees me so that I can know who I am and who God is and not accept the counterfeit language and thoughts of you're not good enough. You're not smart enough. You're not funny. You're not, you're not, you're not. Because that's what the counterfeit wants you to believe, is that all these things that God says you are are not really true. Here's who you really are. And that is counterfeit. So at my friend's Alan, friend Alan's funeral, Alan Milkey, I told a couple of bad dad jokes. I thought, this is going to be risky, but I, I think I'm going to do this. Because Alan was known for his really bad jokes and and saying some really wise things and funny ways that would make you groan. And so I told these two jokes. I should have told these up front. But maybe at the end here, you'll be able to laugh and go away a little bit smarter or whatever, or you're going to moan a lot. And there you go. And the first one was told to me by a colleague at my work. So do... Trees poop in the forest. And the reality is, yes, they do. Where do you think number two pencils came from? 
and the whole place erupted and laughed. That is such a stupid joke. <laughs> it is terrible. In fact, I didn't laugh the first time. I could not believe. In fact, I was stunned when about three or 400 people started laughing when I told that joke. So I told the second one. Here was the second joke. What do Dubai and the city of Abu Dhabi think about the Flintstones? Well, Dubai really doesn't like the Flintstones, but Abu Dhabi do. <laughs> and right now you're going, that is the dumbest joke I have ever heard. No, there's dumber ones. Trust me. I've heard them. And once again, these people, I was shocked. I thought they're just going to go, oh, about 300 of them laughed again. I'm going, oh, my goodness. It just depends if you have enough people that it hits enough of the right ones that they'll laugh. Everybody didn't laugh, but I was so shocked. So you want to tell jokes, hopefully better ones than that. Those were not, you know, I think those are some of the dumbest jokes ever. But I chose them because he was known for his bad dad jokes. So look for what is real. Spend more time reading and finding out what God says about you and about his love for you and about who you are as a person and who he created you to be and who the godly are than you do thinking about what he says about the people who are not godly and who are not a part of, the, of his kingdom yet. And I'll read that scripture to you once again. The heart of the godly thinks carefully before speaking. The Lord, he hears the prayers of the righteous. Enjoy your day. Have a great time looking at the good things God says about you. And that was Proverbs 15, 28 to 31, the New Living Testament. Have a great day, youth worker on fire. You've been listening to the Youth Worker on Fire podcast. If you like what you hear, please subscribe and tell your friends. Also, leave a comment and tell us what you think. Stay tuned for more informative episodes.